What's going on, guys? The Inhuman Beatdown, and I'm back with more Heaven's Fill. Last time, I don't remember what happened last time. <laughs> I don't remember. All oh, right, 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 right. We fought, we fought Medusa, and we killed her, and we beat Shinji, and then Zoken showed up, and some other stuff happened, and then we talked to Kotomine, and he's like, "Oh, you have to step on people's dreams. Tell the, <laughs> you have to step on them. Tell them you're its daddy, or some shit like that." I don't remember. Anyways. Let's move on. Day five. Das Oman. Light flows in. The warmth I feel through my eyelids informs me that it is morning, as opposed to the cold telling me that it's the afternoon. I don't know where I was going with that. I turn over, I turn over and look away from the light. I still feel sleepy. Judging by the feel of the air, it's around 5.30. How the fuck do you know that? I was making a joke about that. I went to bed late last night. I came home from the church, forced Saber to sleep in the other building. I finally went to sleep myself around 3 a.m. Look, that sounds about pretty normal for me. I don't know if I can cope with getting only two hours of sleep. It was a frantic, exhausting day yesterday. Nobody can blame me if I sleep for another 30 minutes. Huh? I think I saw something. It's by my futon. It seems something big is by my futon. Shit, it's a spider? Get it off! Come to think of it, I feel someone's presence. Shit, is it a spider person? Get rid of it! I feel restless as if someone is watching me. So this means... Yes. What is it, Shiro? Why are you in my room? I gave you a separate room last night. How was I supposed to suck your cock, though? Uh... Two forward? Yeah. I leap up from the futon to my feet. No, I stop myself at the last second. I can't show her my lower half because, um, it's... Oh my god. I forgot this was in Heavensville. I forgot this was in Heavensville. Oh, God. So, yeah, Shiro can't get up because he has a boner. Necessary? No, probably not. Probably not fucking needed at all. All it serves is to be like, Oh my god, I'm embarrassed! Don't look at my boner! This is stupid. Man, I hope fucking... Rialta knew I did away with that... The morning wood crap. Yes, and I think there is a problem with it. You directed me to a room, but that room is not close enough to yours. I need to be by your side so that I may protect you. Oh, hold on. Just get away from me. Just get away. Please get away. No, I'll get away if you won't. Still rolled up in my futon, I scramble away from Saber. God, this is pathetic. Oops. I didn't mean to grab on my mic cord. This is just pathetic. I hate this. This is stupid. I hate this forced kind of like, oh, he's so embarrassed. He, 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 he kind of humor here because it serves no purpose. It literally doesn't. Just fucking let him deal with this as a man. Let him just be like, alright, fuck it, whatever. Look at my dong. Eh, whatever. Sabre looks at me with wonder. Man, what does she think of a healthy guy of my age? I get nervous just from having her close to me, so it's really shocking if she's sitting by my side when I wake up. And it was a surprise attack, too. My composure were an army that would have just annihilated it. Shiro, as I was saying... You mean the room? Yes. We should sleep in the same room to be safe. The, bound the boundary field on this house is excellent, but it only serves as a warning. It will do nothing to shield you if you are attacked here. Saber has a point, but I wish she would consider the state of my nerves. 
I'll go crazy before any enemy attacks us if I sleep in the same room with Saber. Oh my god, yeah, sleep with a- sleep in the same room with a girl? Whatever will you do? <gasps> Perish the thought! Carol? <gasps> Heavens, no! It's so ridiculous sounding. What do fucking writers think young guys are? Most of them would jump at the chance to fucking sleep in the same room with a girl. I don't understand this. I don't understand why a lot of like... And I see this predominantly maybe only in, Jap in uh, fucking Japanese games now that I think about it. Because the only other one I could think of that does this was Bloody Bride. It did this kind of thing too where like the uh, fucking protagonist just had an aversion being near women. And I'm just like... What does Japan think of its population? I mean, this is why it had population issues. It taught everyone to stay away from women. Well, also that and the, uh, you know, 80-week uh, fucking work hours. But, you know. It's not like I'll be uh, with Saber all the time, so we should distance ourselves. It is 2021, after all. I'm just going to come flatter because by the time it comes out, maybe, hopefully, COVID vaccine will actually be, you know, fucking more readily available. Because I don't think this is coming out till June? July? When is this coming out? <laughs> I don't remember. I lost track. Uh, oh, I totally forget about it. I have school today. Shiro, why are you so pale? I have noticed that you make that face whenever you are about to suggest something foolish. She's sharp. Her previous aura of loyalty is gone and she keeps me at bay with a distrustful look. Well, there's something I forgot to tell you. I kneel and face her. Well, how can I phrase things so that she'll approve of me going to school? <laughs> the answer is... No way, because she didn't. I feel her staring at me and it hurts. Saber is sitting Japanese style while I cut the tofu. Staring at me with that expression of hers, but she has her eyes closed. How is she staring? I will go to school like usual. We never reached a compromise after I said that. Saber objected, of course. She says it's dangerous for me to be alone. But I have my personal life too. Okay, literally, can we take a moment to appreciate here? That the game just basically summarized an argument that Shiro and Saber already had. The whole going to school situation, which was from the fate route, alright? They pretty much just said, we never found a solution for it. We'll fucking compromise some way as we go along, and that'll be the resolution to that. As opposed to where in fate route, it was the first time we were seeing it, so it was super drawn out, being this whole huge argument that we got to see on screen. Why the fuck did I have to sit through him trying to argue about Saber sleeping in the same room with him again? Because the only thing that got added to that was the fact that he had a boner. People wonder why I have a problem with Nazi's writing. <laughs> and this is his early writing too, so I can be like, it's always been bad! Or at least always been mixed, is a good way to put it. Uh, uh, let's see, Fujini will get suspicious if I skip school and I won't know what's going on outside if I stay indoors. And to go somewhere with Saber means warning other masters. I think the results will be good enough if I go out on my own. And most of all, masters fight where there are no people, right? Then I'll be safe during the day. Nobody will attack me unless I go someplace deserted. I mean, I was going to say unless they just wanted to massacre an entire city, and I thought how they would get away with that. I'm still actually thinking about it. Because, I mean, there'd be no way to get away from that kind of detection. Even the church and everyone else would probably know something was up. 
I mean, unless you framed it like a giant explosion going off like a gas main or something, you'd still probably have the Magi associate the magical association and the fucking holy church after you, though. But Saber insisted that it's not going to be enough. Her excessive concern pissed me off, so I stubbornly insisted that I'm going to school, and this is the result. Her glare feels like it's burning into me. The moral of the story is, she'll bear a big grudge if you make her mad, and she gets out of hand because she is emotional. The game said that, not me. So I should be careful not to act stubborn again. Man, you inflexible blockhead. Can't tell if he's talking about himself or Saber. Honestly, they both fit the bill. Did you say something, Shiro? No, I'm just talking to myself. This tofu's really tough. And she has sharp ears. She's not the type you want to get into a cold war with. Huh? It's that time already? After the doorbell, I hear the front door opening. And I also hear the familiar tone of Sakura's voice. Oh, so I lost 30 minutes while I was arguing with Saber. But breakfast is almost ready. I thought about having bread to please Saber, but it seemed too much like bribery, so I changed my mind. Japanese people eat rice. I'll counter her violent glare with pressure of, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Good morning, senpai. Are you already done cooking? Yeah, I'm pretty much done. Good morning, Sakura. Fujini should be coming soon, so help me serve the food. Okay, I'll be helping you. <clears throat> uh. This is what happens if you don't warm up your ver verkles? Your verkles. Ah, yes. Ah, those damn verkles. Look at them. Verkling. Also doesn't help I don't have any water. Because I was stupid. <laughs> Sakura sets her bag down in the living room and greets Saber. Good morning, Saber-san. Were you able to sleep well last night? Yes. It was not a familiar room, but it was not a problem since I am familiar with this house. Oh, they're talking. They didn't talk much yesterday, but I guess Sakura's gotten over it after one night. Yeah, totally. Sorry to keep you waiting, senpai. Kept you waiting, huh? What should I start with? Can you get one big plate and four small ones? The salad's done, so you can serve it. Okay. Oh, wow, we're having German potato salad this morning? You're elaborate this morning, cooking western food. Sakura is surprised, but she scoops out the salad onto the big plate. The salad is the only western food I made. You have to understand, I'm not giving in to Saber. I'm just proactively trying to clear the air between us. It's a peace offering, if you will. Oh, it smells good. Can I try some, senpai? <clears throat> yeah, but it's hot. And it might be sweet, too. Hot temperature or, like, hot spicy? Because I was going to say, who makes hot salad? Sakura picks up a piece of potato with the cooking chopsticks. Oh, it really is sweet. That's not onion, is it? Licking her lips, Sakura tries to figure out the ingredients. Hi, welcome to the origin of cooking with Emiya. I wish I was kind of joking. Although it's still poetically ironic that I think people... People lost their shit when they saw that anime come out, but the manga had been going for, like, several years. At least a year, I think, before that anime came out. So it's like, it's kind of like how I feel with Apocrypha. Everyone was just like, oh my god, Apocrypha! Oh my god, Astaful's a dude! And I'm just over here like... Uh... <laughs> oh no, wait, I got perfect way. Yeah, what? Astaful's a dude? Always has been. At least all FGO made it confusing. Not confusing, stupid. Stupid's the better word. Alright. <clears throat> Her gesture surprises me. I should be used to seeing Sakura sample my food, but when she's so close, 
I can't take my eyes off her. Oh, excuse me. Oh, wow, this really is good, senpai. I like this taste. Sakura must really like it as she happily scoops the salad onto the big plate. There's nothing unusual about it. The surprise fades and I sigh with relief. Oh, hold on, Sakura. Yes? What is it, senpai? She's the same as always. She's no different from yesterday. It should not concern Sakura even if Shinji was a master or even if her family is a family of magi. There's no way Sakura would be involved in this con in the conflict. <coughs> There's no way, but... Sakura, let me see your right cheek. There's a bruise on her right cheek, as if she's been punched. I see why they cut that dialogue. Again, it's so redundant. There's no point saying, let me see your cheek, if you're just going to tell me what's there. Oh, it's not what you think, senpai. I, um, fell on the stairs. Also redundant dialogue, because Sh Shiro is just about to tell us exactly what happened. There's only one person who Sakura would make excuses for. She's been like this for a long time. She would be strangely lively, uh, lively or unnaturally depressed. It always meant Shinji was taking things out on her. When I first found out about it, I went and punched him. But he's never done something this bad before. About half a year ago, I spotted a bruise on Sakura's arm. I hit Shinji when I realized he'd done it, but he's never punched a girl's face. Damn him. S senpai I hear a sharp crack. It seems I broke the chopsticks in my hand. I'm pissed. I told him never to hit his sister again, but he couldn't keep such a simple promise. Why are you surprised? Dude, Shinji is like total ass garbage. No matter how much good Shiro possibly thinks are in people, and he has got to realistically understand that people are not always good. This motherfucker lived through a giant fire that killed a bunch of people. He has to understand that there are terrible fucking things in this world. I will never, never to this day understand why Shiro is written so naively when it comes to Shinji. He clearly understands Shinji is a problem. Why the fuck would he think he'd keep that promise? He knows Shinji is a bad person. Why does Nasu keep trying to fucking insinuate that Shiro is like, I, oh my god, I don't understand. Why? <coughs> oh god, wrong pipe. <coughs> <coughs> uh. Anyways. No, senpai, you've got it all wrong. I just fell, really. I fell when Nissan bumped into me. Sakura. That's all that happened, senpai. Please don't concern yourself with Nissan right now. He's been acting weird since last night. He's really annoyed, so he might say odd things to you. Man, I totally... S Man, again, I totally see why they cut half that dialogue. It was so pointless. It added nothing else to this. Sakura is defending her brother. If the person who got hit isn't complaining, I definitely can't. Um, I'm, uh, um, actually, um, hmm, uh, who, uh, mm, that's a subject I'm not comfortable touching. Uh, we're gonna move on, but let me just say, no, you probably shouldn't be complaining just because the other person is complaining, just because they're too scared to say anything and don't want to get other people in trouble is not necessarily a reason to just hold back. Throw that out there. Ugh. And I know why Shinji's acting strange. Shinji was abnormal last night. His rights as a master were taken away, and he was humiliated by his own grandfather. And by me. <laughs> he must have taken out his anger on Sakura after he went home. Sakura doesn't know anything. 
Nobody's told her about her brother or about the secret of the Malto family. Is the secret of the Malto family like knockoff legends of the Hidden Temple? Secret of the Malto family. No, okay. Then, is it safe for her to live to live with Shinji when he's in such a state? He hasn't given up. Sakura is a convenient outlet for his violent personality. Um, senpai, I'm sorry to trouble you so early in the day. <laughs> you idiot. Don't say that. I'm the one who caused the trouble. I should have expected this when I fought Shinji last night. I have to think of a way. A way to keep Sakura smiling. A dismal air hangs over the rest of the morning. Fujini didn't turn up for some odd re for some reason, and Sakura was quiet all through breakfast. Saber doesn't talk much to start with, and I'm not uh, the gar garulous type. Gar. My phone. Cool. I have it nearby. Uh, what the? F I'm gonna assume it means something akin to like talkative, but I still want to actually know what that means. Garulous. Yeah, I figured. Excessively talkative, especially on trivial matters. Garrulous. Garrulous. Good to know. Uh, and I'm not the garrulous type. It doesn't take long to finish breakfast, so Sakura leaves 40 minutes earlier to go to her morning practice. Um, I'll be going now, senpai. Sakura forces a smile as she puts on her shoes. Oh, don't push yourself too hard with your club activity. You always tried to go there even when you were sick, right? Just practice moderately and go sip some tea in the, ba tea in the back. If Mitsuzuri says something, tell her I'll owe her one. Okay, I'm sure Captain would love that. Sakura opens the door. She bows and turns to leave. And walks right into the door. Ow. <laughs> she holds the nose she banged into the door. As opposed to the other nose she didn't bang into the door. Uh, are you alright, Sakura? Is your nose bleeding? No, I'm fine. I'd die if you saw my nose bleeding. Sakura staggers and gets up. It doesn't seem like it was Sakura's usual clumsiness. Are you really alright, Sakura? It looked like you fell. If you got dizzy, then... Huh? No, that can't be. I was just clear... Care fuck, I can words. <clears throat> I was just careless, so, um, this is embarrassing. Then I'll be going now. I'll tell Fujimori-sensei that your breakfast was good like always. Sakura leaves as if to shake off my worries. I guess she's alright. If anything, she's suffering from mental exhaustion. And then there's Shinji. I can't just leave her be. But I have no clear solution. I can't consult Saber, nor can I tell Sakura the truth. Fujini is out of the question, of course. Damn, if only there was someone else at school who I could talk to about the Holy Grail War. Man, people like that don't just conveniently appear out of nowhere. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. If you like this video, be sure to leave it a like. And if you want to see more of my future content, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And to stay up to date with all of the releases that come out daily, be sure to click that bell. And if you're feeling a little bit generous, why not check out my Patreon page? Link is down in the description. And as always, until the next video, hasta.